Hey you guys. Hey guys, welcome to a whole new video on my channel. My name is Rania or Iramnia in Norwegian. I am 17 years old, turning 18 in October, and this is my channel, so welcome. So the plan for today's video is I'm gonna give you guys some book recommendations for the summer because it is June now. I'm filming this on June 12th. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about summer books, get into the summer vibes, you know, the smell of sunscreen, the sound of like waves and water. This is gonna be really weird for some of y'all, but my favorite smell in the summer is literally boat fuel. Is that how you say it? Boat fuel? Is like that a word? I don't know. But you know the oil you need to drive a boat? It's the best summer smell. I don't know why, I just like it. If anyone agrees, comment because I so where I cannot be alone in this. I know there are people out there who think the same. Anyways, enough yapping from me. We're gonna get into the books. So. I have a little stack of books down here. I'm not gonna show you, but it's it's pretty tall. It's like probably half a meter tall. But anyways, we're gonna get to the first book, Beach Read by Emily Henry. You guys, this is the summer book, and I'm not joking, this is the summer book. If you want a book that is giving immaculate summer vibes, grumpy sunshine about people who love books. These, this is literally about two authors. This is about January and Gus. I read this in 2022. Absolutely ate it up. I want to reread this. I gave it a 4.5 stars in the past, but I think if I read it again, I'd probably give it a 5. This book is from January's point of view and both of her parents passed away, unfortunately. She has inherited her dad's house, I think. And I think if I'm not completely wrong, it's by a lake, but I could be wrong. This is how I kind of saw it in my head. It has been two years since I read this. Um, I need a little refresh, but her next door neighbor is this guy named Gus and they are both writers. He writes, does he write sci-fi? I'm not completely sure what he writes, but I think he writes sci-fi and she writes romance, <laughs> I think. <laughs> this is why I'm like the worst booktuber right now. I think, I think, I think, I don't know, I don't know. So they watch each other write through their windows and like write at the same time and stuff. And then they decide to do challenge where they're gonna switch genres. So she is writing the genre he normally does and he's gonna write her genre. They have to join each other on doing research for each of the books because Gus has never done research for a romance book and Janaria has never done research for Gus's genre, you know what I mean? So they have to do research together and also it's a small town romance. It's a small town romance, they both have houses by a lake, they're both authors, they switch genres, it's such a good grumpy sunshine. It's amazing. You should really read this. Although I can't completely remember the story I remember so many things from this book that were really good. So please read this. It's a must read in the summer Then we have another Emily Henry book book lovers by Emily Henry. We're gonna do a little Emily Henry thing here This book is about Nora and Charlie which as the title says book lovers are both book lovers and work in the book industry I think they both work as publishers, I think. I'm not quite sure, but something like that. This wasn't my favorite book, but I know so many people love it. And I think that this is really up to interpretation. Like it could be your five star and it could be my three star. Even if it was my three star, I recommend you go read this because this is a book where I wouldn't read it again, but I would definitely recommend it to other people. So it was really cute. It's also a small town romance. They hate each other at first. It's enemies to lovers, kind of. Nora and her sister goes on a holiday to this place where her sister has always wanted to go because it's like from it's a town that is written about in a book and they go there and Charlie has apparently grown up there which Nora didn't know so they meet there and they're kind of forced to see each other around and blah 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 and things happen and it actually is really cute I just it wasn't my jam I didn't like Nora but most of you guys would like this I think it just wasn't I read it at the wrong time I think so read this. It's a perfect summer read anyways, so if you like it or not, it's still good for the summer. Then we have Happy Place by Emily Henry, which I have not read, but this is about two people who are in this friend group and they've been together for a long time while 
being in the friend group and then they break up and they're still going on this vacation i think with the friend group i could be very wrong about this but i think they go together like bread and butter gin and tonic blake lively and ryan reynolds the place that friend group always goes to is for sale so this is the last summer they'll, they'll all be together and they have broken up but they pretend for the friends to not be broken up because it is the last time they'll all be together i think something like that everyone loves this book really good like summer read i need to read it because i haven't read this so many good authors had have, have said stuff on this book that's good so taylor jenkins reed which is one of my favorite authors hilarious and wise another knockout and colin hoover said about emily henry one of my favorite authors lauren asher said a must read book of the year lucy score said heartfelt and hilarious this book is my happy place ali hazelwood also one of my favorite authors said a heart tugging masterpiece from the queen of romance yeah hannah grace beth o'leary so many people love this book and so many people love emily henry so anything by emily henry you need to read in the summer to be honest we're on to our fourth book which this time i've read it so this is Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. Such a good book, okay? I loved this book a lot. Also, this has such a good bend. Can you see this? Oh my god. This book is about Chani and Gabe. And Chani is like an interviewer or a journalist. And she is set to interview Gabe, who is a famous actor. And 10 years ago, they had a little thing together one time and never spoke to each other again. And then and then she set to do like a big interview with him. So Sparks kind of come back. It's really good. It's super cute. It's really wholesome, I think. You should definitely read this book. It's amazing. I absolutely loved it. The surroundings in this book, it kind of gave me like the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo kind of surroundings. So you should definitely read this. Then we have a whole series, the Summer I Turn Pretty series, which is one of the best series out there. It's so cute. It's so wholesome. It's so everything. I love this series. It's YA. I think most people have heard about this. It, this series is about Belly, who every summer goes to a summer house with her mom, her brother, her mom's best friend, and her mom's best friend, two sons, Conrad and Jeremiah. Bali has always had a huge crush on Conrad from the age of like zero. She's really literally grown up having the biggest crush on Conrad, who's the oldest brother. One summer when she's, I think she's 16 in the first one, 15, 16, I don't remember. She suddenly turns pretty, which is okay. And then suddenly both Jeremiah and Conrad have eyes for her. That gets a little tricky. I'm not gonna say more than that. I think most people know what the summer term pretty is about. It's set on a beach. It's really fast paced. Like I flew through these books. They're kind of short as well. Like all of them are like shy of 300 pages, I think. And you should definitely read them. It's a must in the summer. It's just such a vibe. I read the first one at my summer house. They are just so cute. And they're also a little bit sad. The first one's my favorite. Third one is my second favorite. And the second one is my least favorite, but I love them all. And just the series itself is a must read in the summer you guys you have to read this in the summer it literally has summer in the name hello you need to read this then we have another series the heartstopper series these books are about charlie spring and nick nelson charlie is openly gay and he goes to an old boy school and he has been heavily bullied uh, for being gay which is absolutely not okay and so he deals with trauma from that and then one day in class his new seating partner is nick who is a year above him i think yeah charlie is kind of the shy kid and nick is like the popular rugby land the guy that every all the girls want they become really good friends with time and and then after a little while they realize that they have feelings for each other and they fall for each other although everybody knows that charlie is gay nick is not comfortable with coming out yet so the series faces a lot of problems with like mental health and things a lot of queer people have to go through like being scared of coming out and bullying hate and social media hate a lot of stuff like that these books have a lot of representation which i love i think everyone can relate to someone in this book which i think is amazing so read the horse over series they're so cute it will not be one of my book videos without the inheritance game series this is about avery who inherits 
I think it's 42 billion dollars from a guy that she's never met before. His name is Tobias Hawthorne. She is really poor. She kind of sleeps in her car. She normally lives with her sister and her sister's boyfriend, but her sister's boyfriend is really, really, really toxic. So she normally will just sleep in her car and then she has no clue why she's the one who inherited this kind of money. Grayson Hawthorne, who is Tobias Hawthorne's grandchild comes and picks Avery up from school one day and they fly down to Texas to the Hawthorne house, which is the house that Tobias Hawthorne used to live in. All of his family lives in that house now. In order to actually inherit the money, she has to live in that house for a year. You might say, oh, that's easy, but it's not. She has quickly become the youngest billionaire in the world. There are a lot of people who want to kill her for the money. There are some problems throughout the book there she's also trying to find out why she's the one who inherited this money and there is some love going on it's YA I think young adult she's 15 in the first book there are so many riddles such a good series you will not be able to put these books down they're so amazing they're not necessarily summer books but they're just like a must read it's a must read is my favorite series of all time rich teenagers <laughs> uh, private schools mystery kind of thriller sometimes and you will never guess the plot twists in these books it's actually crazy and they can be like a little slow in the start but then you get to page 150 and you will never put the book down you will read until you like literally i once read one of these books for like six hours straight or something so I am a really slow reader, but these books, yeah, I can't, I will never stop raving about these books. The love in these books as well is so good. I forgot to say that Tobias Hawthorne has four grandkids. It's Grayson, who picked her up and flew her to Texas. He's the second oldest one there, and there's Nash, who's the oldest one. He's kind of like a cowboy kind of guy. Then we have Jameson, who is a risky guy. He is a risky guy. And then we have Xander, who is... The youngest one, he is really, really smart. He loves making robots and stuff, making things. Such a cutie. I love Xander. The brothers Hawthorne all have different fathers and one mom. And their mom's kind of crazy. I promise you guys, you will not regret reading these books. They're so good. So read them now please. And then we have even more Jennifer Lynn Barnes. We have the Natural series. I have just read the first one, but everybody loves the series. There are four books. It's this one, The Naturals, Killer Instinct, All In, and Bad Blood. The series is about Cassie, who's a natural reading people. So she gets recruited by the FBI to join their program for like special teenagers who are naturals. And so there is Michael, who's a natural at reading emotion. Dean, who's also a natural at reading people. And then there is Leah, who's a natural at telling if people lie and also a natural at lying. And then there's Selene, 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 I don't know how to pronounce her name, who's a natural with like numbers and stuff. She has every statistic on top of her head. Like she can tell you how many people in the world eat pasta for dinner two times a week, like on the top of her head, you know what I mean? There are like five teenagers who are naturals who live in this house together and are trained to solve cold cases together they can literally solve any case the found family aspect in this is so good i talked to everyone about these books and jennifer lynn barnes again like she has a phd in psychology i think she will always keep you on your toes you will be screaming crying throwing up wanting to throw the book across the room you need to read these books they're so amazing and i love them i love them Then we have this book, it's called Golden Boys. I've not read this, but I read the back of this and it sounds really interesting. I'm gonna read the back for you guys because the back is what got me. I normally don't read the back of books, but I've started doing it to be honest. But I love going into books blind as well, so yeah. I can't fight the feeling that it's all going to change after this summer. Gabriel, Reese, Sal, and Heath are best friends. When you grow up in the middle of nowhere, being queer and having big dreams will bond you for life. This summer, for the first time, they'll get to follow their dreams, but they'll be doing it apart. It's time to discover who they are, who they really want to be. Will distance divide them or draw them closer than ever? So that's what the book's about. Also, the cover is so cute. Set in the summer, I just think it fits perfectly. The guy in the back here has sunglasses on. Yeah. 
We have another queer romance. This is Call Me By Your Name. This is set in Italy. I think a lot of people have probably watched Call Me By Your Name with Timothy Chalamet, the movie. I'm actually not sure what this is about. I have not watched the movie. I want to read the book before I watch the movie, so I'm gonna read the back for you guys. During a restless summer on the Italian Riviera, a powerful romance blooms between 17-year-old Elio and his father's house guest, Oliver. I don't know if I say this right, but unrelenting, unrelenting currents of obsession and fear, fascination and desire threaten to overwhelm the lovers who at first find indifference to the charge between them. What grows from the depths of their souls is a romance of s sacred... is a romance of sacredly six weeks duration and an experience that marks them for a lifetime. For what the two discover on the Riviera and during the soul sultry evening in Rome is the one thing they both already fear that they may never truly find again total intimacy so it's a queer romance about a guy who falls in love with his dad's house guest in Italy Italy in the summer such a vibe I was supposed to read this in Italy because we were supposed to go to Italy this summer but we cancel it because I think there's gonna be a heat wave in the south of Europe so we're gonna go to Italy in the fall instead i think um most likely we'll see if we ever go to italy this year i don't know but i've never been to italy and i really want to go i've been to spain and france which are the closest to italy that i've been i've also been to croatia but i think you know i'm a ferrari fan we go to italy i also want to read about italy so i think it's gonna be really cute it's also really short i don't know if it's fast paced but it's really short so then we have you and me on vacation by none other than emily henry herself Another Emily Henry book. Emily Henry is so amazing. I haven't read this one either, but there are so many people that say that this book is amazing. So there's about two best friends who always go on a summer trip together in the summer. And two summers ago, it all goes wrong. This summer, Poppy asks Alex to join her on one last trip. So it's a friends to lovers, I think, but also kind of enemies to lovers. I don't know. Isaac read it, said it was really cute. So... I'm excited to read. It's you, me, you and Me on Vacation. Like, it's obviously amazing for summer. So, I would absolutely recommend picking this up during the summer if you haven't read it before. And if you liked it, maybe you should reread it. Really cute covers. Emily Henry's covers are amazing. I love them. And then we have one of my favorite authors, Taylor Jenkins Reid. She is amazing. She is so amazing. She wrote Daisy Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And this is Malibu Rising. I think it's like Carrie Soto is back. Daisy Jones and the Six, Malibu Rising, and The Seven Husbands are in the same universe. And this is about Mick Reva, who is the side character in both Daisy Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands. This book is about his family and him and they're having a s end of the summer party, I think. The house goes up in flames. I don't know more than that, but obviously it looks like it's set on the beach. There, It's like water and a girl surfing on the cover. It's palm trees up here and Malibu. That's very summery. I'm definitely gonna read this this summer. So if you wanna buddy read this with me, send me a DM and we can buddy read it together. I'm gonna read this this summer at least, so you should too. Daisy Jones and the Six. This book is so good. If you like or don't like Fleetwood Mac, but if you like Fleetwood Mac, it's a bonus because this book is basically about Fleetwood Mac. It's about Daisy Jones and Six, which is a band in the 70s. The whole book is written in an interview style, so you get everyone in the band and other people who work with the band and yeah, everyone's point of view. So fast paced. I went through it like this, 400 pages in no time. I could read this in one sitting. It was amazing. And when you read it, it's like you can smell the like summery air. They're going on tour. It's a romance in here, which is kind of problematic, but really good. The whole like band thing, amazing. You really feel like you're there in the 70s watching the band, watching them have all of these arguments, watching them have all of these moments together, watching them write together, watching them record music. As a music fan, as a person who wants to pursue music as a career, this was crazy good to read. Loved, loved, loved. This has also been made into a TV show, which is amazing. It's on Prime. You need to see it right now. It's so good to read the book first. It's crazy good. And like, I literally got everyone and their grandmothers to read this. Got my mom to read it. Got my grandmother to read it. Everyone loved it. And like my whole family, I think we we're like 13 people when we we're at the summer house at most. 
and we all sat down to watch this TV show together because my mom, me, and my grandmother had read, read this book and loved it and we all watched the show and we all loved the show and the music from the show is amazing. We all still listen to it to this day. It's so good. You need to listen to the music while you, re while you read it. This book and the show is obviously heavily inspired by Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks herself, if I'm not completely wrong, said that watching the TV show was like going back in time and watching herself. That's crazy. That's kind of like, that's insane. It's like one of my favorite books. I think I could have read it again. I gave it under five stars on Goodreads, but I think I have to change it because it's just growing on me every day. I love this book so much and you guys need to read this this summer. It's perfect for the summer vibes. It's just amazing. It's amazing. Then we have Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This is a book I've heard very mixed things about. I think it's like childhood friends to lovers of some sort. Emily Henry said a radiant debut. If Emily Henry says the book is good, it's probably amazing. My friend loved this book. It's set on the lake shore. It is like childhood friends to lovers, I think. It's so cute. It's like really summery. Every summer after, of course, it's summery. I think people love this book. I am absolutely going to read this in the summer. I talked about most of these books before actually, but really good and you should absolutely read this this summer. Actually, I can't say if it's good because I haven't read it, but I think it's really good. <laughs> and then you guys, we have Allie Hazelwood. Allie Hazelwood, her books just are good for any time of the year honestly i thought i would talk about these books as well although they're not particularly summary so she writes about women in stem and do you say stem or do you say s-t-e-m it's written in capital letters but i don't know both of these i've read they're really good i love ali hazelwood's writing it's so fast paced it is so cute. She writes amazing books. Literally both of these I absolutely love. This is the most recent book I finished actually. And it was so cute, so wholesome. Also so exciting, so gut-wrenching and I almost cried. It was really good. This one I read two years ago, so it's been a while, but- <coughs> Oh my God, bless me. Yeah, I read The Love Hypothesis a while ago, but also so good. She has so many good books. I'm so excited to read Love Theoretically. I actually have it. Why have I not included that in this video? The books are scattered all across my floor right now. I'm so excited to pick up this book this summer, Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. All of the people I've talked to about this book say it's a five star, that it's so good, it's amazing. So I really want to read this, but yeah, Love on the Brain and The Love Hypothesis, which I've already read. So good books, and you should just read them any time of the year, honestly, but I thought I would bring them up in the summer video because they also fit really well in the summer when you just need a quick book of fast-paced, cute romance on the beach. Amazing. And then this one, honestly, I've not heard that many great things about, but The Unhoneymooners, Fake Dating, Enemies to Lovers, Honeymoon, Summer Vibes, there are palm trees on the cover. Why would you not try and give this a chance? You might love it, although not everybody loves this book. I've heard so many mixed things about this book, but I'm gonna read it, see if I like it. I might not, but I'm definitely gonna get to this book in the summer because, hello, Hawaii. Like, if it's said in Hawaii, I'm gonna read it in the summer. We have arrived at our last book. This book is one of my all time favorite books. Such a good book, you guys. It's amazing. It's so cute. Called Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. Oh my god, I will never stop talking, ranting, yapping about this book. This is a kind of childhood rivals to lovers, I guess or childhood enemies, lovers, kind of not enemies, but a little bit. Is there fake dating in it? There's kind of a hint of fake dating in it, I'm pretty sure. It is so good. It's this is about Liz and Wes. <laughs> you guys, you don't understand. Wes Bennett. Oh my God, can someone give me my Wes? He is the best book boyfriend ever. They are literally neighbors and they've been since they were children and it starts off with them fighting over a parking spot. They go to the same high school and then one day uh, one of their other like childhood neighbors s comes back from having moved away for a while I think, if I'm not completely wrong. I've read this, I should, this is one of my favorite books. Well, his name is Michael and Liz always had a huge crush on him. He was like the cutest guy, tall, dark hair, if I remember correctly and super kind, lovely guy. Wes is kind of helping Liz get Michael. Something else might happen. Liz is a hopeless romantic. Her mom sadly passed away and 
with her mom, they would always watch rom-coms, like all the rom-coms. So this book is filled to the brim with rom-com um, quotes. In the prologue, there is literally a quote from Nothing Hill. Nothing Hill? Nothing Hill? I don't know. I haven't seen that movie. I know, I should. I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. And then we have, oh, which chapter is it? Where my favorite quote is because my favorite movie as you guys should know if you don't know it already is 10 things i hate about you i have a couple of favorite movies though so my favorite like 90s early 2000s movie is 10 things i hate about you my favorite like newish 2014 and up movie is to all the boys i loved before the first one but i love all of them but the first one in particular i could watch so many times and never get tired of it. I love that movie with my bones. It's my comfort movie. And then my favorite animated movie, I have two actually, but my most favorite animated movie is Ratatouille. And my second favorite animated movie is uh, Cars 2. I know this is such a debated topic, okay? Nobody likes Cars 2, but me and Walker Scobell, Walker Scobell, I've got your back on this one because Cars 2 is the best Cars movie. I'm sorry to everyone who loves the first one or the third one. If you love the third one, what is with you? Because what? But the second one is just the best one and it's amazing and I love it. Also, action movie Infinity War is my favorite ever. Avengers Infinity War, Marvel. I am a Marvel kind of gal. I also love, actually I do love Justice League, but it's not my favorite. Lego Batman movie. That's amazing, amazing. Why am I talking about, about movies? I'm gonna talk about books. Anyways, there's so many rom-com quotes in this. There is a quote from 10 Things I Hate About You as well. You're not as vile as I thought you were. 10 Things I Hate About You. There are more 10 Things I Hate About You quotes in this book though. Here's another one. Chapter 10, which is my literal lucky number. But mostly I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. Such a good quote. This is my new copy. I gave my other copy that I've annotated to my friend as a gal dance gift. So this is my new one and it is purple and I love it. This is my favorite copy ever of any book, I think. I love this book so much. And yeah, it has like rom-com scenes on the front of it. And it's so cute and give me less than it. Thank you very much. That's my biggest dream in life. Oh my God, I am the queen of yapping, I think. I think if there was a yapping contest, I would win. I've been yapping about books for one and a half hour right now. Go read all those summer books. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm gonna go run now, which I'm not in the mood for at all, but I have to. Because we have to get the workout in tonight, today. That was all of the books that I wanted to talk to you about today. And I hope you liked the video. It's so sad because my book videos usually don't get views at all like at all i think that you should go to this playlist up here and watch all of my book videos if you like this video love you and if you got to the end of this video please comment the book emoji like the stacked books this emoji down in the comment section if you got to the end of this video i literally love you you are the best and i hope to see you in my next video love you bye